Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. It's Saturday morning here. The birds are having their bath all filled up and refreshed. All the avers have been cleaned, ready for our guests. This week's vlog, I'm gonna tell you four top tips for really attracting and helping wildlife in your garden. So we're gonna mix a top tips video with the weekly vlog. It's May. It's the most beautiful month of the year in the UK. Everything is verdant. The oak trees have just burst into leaf behind many of the other trees. They're looking almost luminous green in the countryside against the blue sky. And the flowers are really coming into their thing now. The perennial flowers and so on and so forth that feed our insect life. Hawthorns are in blossom. Enjoy this week's vlog and enjoy the top tips along the way that all of us can do really in our gardens if you have them or the school field even to help wildlife. That's making me need a wee. Enjoy the rest of the video. Look at the wonderful silver border here at Hold Me House. Just coming on song. It's May, beautiful time of year in the garden. Things are really starting to grow. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Also have seen the forget-me-nots. Some of this has been around all the time. You just sort of a childhood memory. Just that little burst of sort of blue in the springtime. When everything's actually quite yellow in early spring. Look at these, look at these. Say a silver border, they fit in a tree, don't they? Some really exotic looking plants in this border. Don't forget holdme.com. Look at this. Holdme.com. Come and see the gardens, come and see the fulcrum, come and see the British Wildlife Area. Just take it all in. Look at it. Just bumble around in the lovely Holdenby Gardens. Magnificent house. This is just a side elevation, but absolutely beautiful. Come and see us soon. You really will enjoy your time here, and it really is for all the family. But for now, a little taster of the silver border. Have a look at these. Primary wing feather from a Harris hawk, and primary wing feather from a golden eagle really does give you some idea of the size difference between those birds. Now the first flush is going over now. Comfrey, absolute brilliant, brilliant plant if you want to help invertebrates in your garden. I don't know if you can see, little bumblebees here now. This comfrey flowers really, really early in the spring. It's one of the first sort of spring flowers actually here in the Falcon Centre. And it's a really important source of food for those early spring bumblebees but it will go on flowering for weeks and weeks. And for bees, absolutely brilliant. Now, once it's finished flowering, cut it down hard, and a few weeks later, it will regenerate, and it'll have another flush of flowers later in the summer. And then it, the thick mass of comfrey will also offer a really good place for creepy crawlies and invertebrates to hibernate and, uh, and get through the winter. Comfrey, is an absolute must in your garden. It grows anywhere. It looks really great uh, alongside sort of or behind the garden pond. It really sort of, that's often a natural place for it to grow, sort of on, a, on a, the banks of waterways, rivers and streams. Comfrey, easy to grow. And when you chop it down, excuse me, chuck it in your compost heap. It's a really good composting plant and you can even do a bit of research and make some really good comfrey fertilizer for your other plants and vegetables get yourself some comfrey looks great easy to keep mega for the bumblebees the number one absolute best thing you can do in your garden to attract and support wildlife bar nothing is a pond a wildlife pond this one as you can see i need to clear some of the algae the blanket weed off the top there but the water plants, the aquatic plants are now starting to thrive in spring. And once they get going, they'll starve out the algae. A pond, like any part of your garden, needs your care and management to perform and look at its best for sure. Not a fish pond, we're talking a wildlife pond. I just tried to film a couple of smooth newts in here. This pond's been here about a year. It's already supporting amphibian life. And lots of dragonflies emerging right now as well. It really is the best thing 
for wildlife. Simple things to do, make sure there's a slope somewhere so hedgehogs that come in, they will come in, they will drink, they will fall in, they can swim as long as they can clamber out, no harm done, or you'll drown your hedgehogs. If you put in a marsh area behind or to the side or wherever around your pond, fantastic. Loads of invertebrates in, that, in those marsh plants and again, this kind of thing, it's really supporting invertebrates which will support birds, it will support frogs and other amphibians, it will support your hedgehogs. Don't put any fish in. If you, this is a really small pond, it's effective. If you go bigger and you want fish, the most natural thing would be three spine sticklebacks and nine spine sticklebacks. The three spine are interesting, very interesting. You will see them, but be warned, they'll really, really pick off new tags. It is better not to have fish in your pond. Another alternative is actually golden rudd. So rudd are found throughout the UK. Uh, they stunt like perch do to the size of their environment. So in a pond, say twice this size, the rudd will get about this big. Golden rudd, you'll see them. Uh, they're a surface feeder. I've had thriving newt and frog populations in the pond with lots of rudd, golden rudd breeding in there. Do not put carp of any kind, goldfish or anything in your wildlife pond. They will destroy the weed. The way they sift through the silt, they'll constantly cloud the water and they'll eat anything that moves. They look pretty. Really, don't bother with those for your wildlife pond. Certain people, I think I remember Chris Packham years ago on, on Springwatch or something, I believe, saying a tree is the best thing you can put in your garden for wildlife. I completely disagree. A pond, if you don't even feed the birds, they'll come to your garden to drink and bathe in your pond. Also, of course, for most of us, even though this is not native, a tree, a tree, by the time it's matured and productive for wildlife, is too big for most of our gardens. A pond can be any size, it will still attract and support wildlife. Definitely my number one top tip for helping wildlife in your garden is a wildlife pond. Comment below if you want me to do a small video, a short video, a no-nonsense, simple way to create a wildlife pond in your garden. Comment below and that's a video we can do in the future, no problem whatsoever. Now talking of trees, this plant can be grown as a small tree, a fantastic wildlife hedge, or a really beautiful shrub in your garden. This is one of the most magnificent English countryside plants there is, especially during May. The May blossom, the hawthorn. This plant will be an insect haven while it's flowering in the springtime, and an absolute haven for birds and other animals. Hawthorn really is a must for just about everybody's garden. It is stunningly attractive and can be kept to any size or shape or form that you see fit. Get yourself a hawthorn, really, really good part of any wildlife garden. Bonus tip number four, plant some buddleia in your garden. Now the purists will say, ah, oh, invasive weed, non-native plant. There's better plants for our native invertebrate life and wildlife. Well, when these buddleias flower, I've planted them as a kind of screen here in the Fulcrum Centre. When these buddleia flower, I'll tell you what, summer to late summer, you'll be hard pushed to find any flowering plant that will offer as much nectar source to hoverflies and butterflies and moths. They are non-native, they are an invasive weed in some parts of the country, certainly along railway lines. Keep them under control, cut them down hard every spring as soon as the frosts are gone. So the flowers are sort of your height, not 20 foot in the air. And these buddleia will be thick with bumblebees, honeybees, hoverflies, and all those wonderful vanessid butterflies that come towards late summer, the red admiral, the painted lady, the peacocks, and the tortoiseshells. You can't beat buddleia. 
in that respect or you'll certainly struggle. I'm just down in a, a real regular school. I've been coming here four or five years now. Down in Dibden in the New Forest. I go for the morning. I get home as quick as I can with all the animals to look after. But this time, I've made myself stop as I always want to every year. It's been raining all morning, but the sun is just peeking out to see if I can find any adders in the forest heath right near the school. Oh, dry mouth. It is um, oh, a walked area and it's you know near civilization if you like. But still looks good, still well worth a look. I keep hoping I can find something to flip to find some slow worms or something. The gorse is looking absolutely beautiful at this time of year. It really is. Heathlands are certainly, certainly magical wildlife places. Anyway, I'll report back if I find anything interesting. Just listen down there. Cool wind, <clears throat> rainy start. But the sun's just really not being in my favour. It wants to come out, but it's not yet. But if it's a common lizard out basking, it's not enough for adders. Look at this common lizard. It's a proper, decent, gorgeous looking one as well. Look at this animal. Hardly stunning colours, but come on. Any reptiles here in the UK are to be absolutely marvelled at. Our rubbish climate, cut off from the continent. We don't get many species, but my goodness me. Each and every one a marvel, a beautiful thing. Not an adder, and that's the target. But whether there's any on this heathland, I don't know. It's not somewhere I've been recommended. It's just the nearest place to the school I've been. Let's see what he does. Darn it, didn't crawl onto my finger as planned. <laughs> Lovely heathland habitat, though. That's made me really happy. Because where there's one, there's got to be more. So you saw just how easily that lizard just disappeared into undergrowth. Snakes, even easier. But when you look around a habitat like this, and without anything to flip, like old bits of tin, not that you want them somewhere like this, but bits of wood rocks, you realise really, if you see a, any reptile, certainly a snake, out sunbathing, somewhere you don't know, have no local knowledge, that's one of goodness knows how many that you'd never see that are just just tucked under the heather and the gorse there great school today three classes um andrew bowie who gets me in I'm going to school say four or five years and the kids have a great knowledge of wildlife and this is this is literally on the doorstep of their school really good knowledge um, lots of kids tell me about night jazz i've been doing this 12 years first time i've here heard them tell me what night jars are it's great that they've got this local knowledge when i go to schools talking about rainforests this makes a fantastic change talking about new forest animals to the kids that live in the new forest area much more tangible much more important to us here in england it really is if you can't get them interested in 
the stunning wildlife and reptile life here, how on earth are you going to hook them on somewhere thousands of miles away? Anyway, so far, one common lizard. Let's see if we can go for more. One massive problem being here. That's one of many massive problems. Well, there's two now, look. The famous new Flemish ponies. My phobia. Horses, and they're everywhere. Backing off. Thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe. It really, really helps. It really helps. So just please click subscribe, drop us a comment if you like, and hit like if you like. And we'll see you in the next video. Really appreciate you watching, guys. What a beautiful day. I'll see you soon.